What's up everybody? I have the DePiro WS4A reverse osmosis water filter here. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about who needs a reverse osmosis water filter in their home. Whether or not an old school unit with a tank is a good option, or if you should pick up a tankless filter like the one I have here. I'll unbox this DePiro unit, do a full review covering its features and benefits, uh, specifically who I think the filter is for and who would and would not benefit from buying it. Uh, this will include a full breakdown of its filtration performance compared to other similar units. And uh, also I'll compare the cost to buy and operate this unit. And lastly, talk about the ease of use and its quirks and features. Lastly, I'll do a full install, which you can use as a guide and follow along with me if you're doing the install yourself. Or alternatively, you could watch the install section uh, just to see if this is a project that you wanna take on, or if you'd just rather hire a plumber to do it for you. Okay, let's jump in. A question that I always get is, do I need a full-fledged reverse osmosis water filter for my home, or is a Brita or a refrigerator filter sufficient? And the short answer to this question is, yes, you definitely need a reverse osmosis unit, a slightly longer answer would be that it depends on the quality of water entering your home. But consider this, the US Safe Drinking Water Act only covers 91 contaminants. And an analysis of government records by the New York Times identified, quote, hundreds of chemicals associated with a risk of cancer and other diseases at small concentrations in drinking water. And it gets worse because some of the well-known contaminants that are regulated, such as lead, are still present in U.S. municipal water. I'll just let John Oliver explain. A USA Today uh, network report found lead contamination in almost 2,000 additional water systems spanning all 50 states. And we can't just act like it's not there, the way we all pretend that the public swimming pool is not 3% child urine. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yes. My opinion is that you need an RO filter, unless you've had your water professionally tested or some by some other way, you know, you know that it's pure. Uh, and the fridge filters are just not going to cut it because while they do cut some contaminants, there are a lot that they let through. For example, did you know Brita filters do not remove fluoride? At the end of the day, reverse osmosis is the gold standard, and it's the only type of water that should be used for drinking and cooking in your home. So. Let's take a look at this unit from DePiro. As of the filming of this video in late 2021, there are several companies now that are manufacturing this new style of tankless reverse osmosis water filter. And there's a lot to like here. Uh, compared with the older style of reverse osmosis filter with a holding tank, these newer units, uh, they take up a lot less space under the sink. Uh, they typically produce higher volumes of water from the spigot, which means you can fill up a glass of water much more quickly. Uh, and they generally have made it a lot easier to change filters and, and do other maintenance when it does come time to do so. Now, DePiro is a new player in this market, and they've just released several models, uh, this being one of them. This happens to be on the lower end. It costs about $300. But again, as of the filming of this video, they're currently offering $90 or $100 off uh, on Amazon. Not sure how long that will last, but you could jump on that offer. Uh, if you're interested. Also, earlier this year, I released a video covering one of the water drop units, uh, the G2P600. This is actually the unit I currently have in my house. Uh, if you want to learn more about that unit, click here. Let's touch briefly on tank versus tankless designs so that you can understand uh, the differences and what might be best for you. So for those of you that have owned an RO system in the past, it probably was a model with a tank. Uh, there are a few differences that you'll immediately notice. First, there's no storage tank. <laughs> because these units contain an internal pump, uh, they're able to produce a steady stream of water on demand. And uh, there's a big plus side to that. The downside is that you do need a power outlet uh, under the sink or wherever you intend to install the unit. And for some people, especially those with older homes, that might be an issue. Second, there are only three filters to replace. Uh, while most older RO systems had five or seven individual filters, DePiro has combined multiple filtration stages uh, into single filters, which simplifies things. And the third major difference is the ease of filter replacements and maintenance. Uh, for those that have had older RO units uh, like me, I, I've come to dread replacing those because you, you screw the filter piece off and, and water is gonna, is gonna get out all over the floor and you gotta have a towel down. And anyways, these units, all of these tankless units 
are just much more simple. You just kind of pop the other filter out, the old filter out, and you stick a new one in and you're done, which is great. Okay, so let's hop into the unboxing. So here's the unit itself, uh, maybe a foot and a half wide and just a little over a foot tall. And then we've got ports at the top. I'll get more into how all of this works uh, during the install. We can pop the side panel off and you can see the filters. Anyways, you can see on the inside here are the three uh, replaceable filters. Again, I'll get more into that during the install. In the box, we also have this flexible PE tubing. This is for input and output water. And uh, there should be another one in there for the drain. And then lastly, we have this accessories box. The manual power adapter. This should be the faucet. It's in a nice little drawstring bag here. And then uh, other components here for the install. Okay, let's jump right into the review. So I actually did the installation of this unit uh, just a little bit earlier, and then I actually removed it, so now it's sitting here. But anyways, I'm doing this review part first because I think that more people are gonna be interested in this. But if you are interested in the installation, I will show you every little step of how to do the whole process uh, later on in this video. So stick around, or if you need, skip ahead. Either way, when I review these units, I'm looking primarily at three different things. The first would be filtration performance, which is a little bit difficult to measure, but we'll get into that. The second would be cost, both the upfront cost to buy the unit, but then also filter replacements over time and over the life of the, of the unit. And lastly, quality, which is a catch-all term, I guess, that includes things like the sturdiness and build quality, uh, flow rate of the, of the water out of the faucet, how much noise it makes, how efficient it is, and, and, and uh, ease of use, things like that. Let's kick things off by looking at filtration performance. Now, uh, it is very difficult to measure and test contaminants outside of the lab, and sending away water samples to a lab takes a couple of weeks and costs a couple hundred dollars, so we're gonna get by with the information that I know. So first up, let's look at basic TDS testing. Now, TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids, which is just a fancy term for saying the mineral content of the water. You can see that I've got three samples here. I've got tap water in the middle, uh, water from the DePuro filter here, and then I also have water out of my water drop reverse osmosis filter fill out. Can't talk for comparison. And we can see that the tap water has an extremely high level of minerals at 431 parts per million. Um, that's extremely hard water, and it's because I live in the Arizona desert. So based off of this figure, I'd expect these filters to be at 40 parts per million or below, and that's because reverse osmosis filters uh, remove 90% of TDS on average. And we can see here that the DePero unit hits 19, which is really good, and the water drop system is at 34, which is also really good. Now, I have a theory that the DePero unit performs a little bit better because it has a filter stage after the reverse osmosis filter and uh, the water drop unit doesn't. So I think that's why it is. But at the end of the day, those numbers are very, very similar and uh, you're not likely to notice. Next, I tried these Regent strips from Amazon. Uh, again, lab testing was just kind of not an option for me. And I thought that this might be a good alternative. Uh, they're supposed to look at a whole bunch of things, pH, alkalinity, chlorine, uh, bromide, nitrate, nitrate, fluoride, lead, copper, whatever, a whole host of things. Uh, but the reality is that the strips look almost identical no matter what type of water I dip them into. So uh, it's kind of a total letdown. My takeaway here, it, you know, even though I didn't get too scientific, is that this DePro system performs very well. Uh, I have no concerns about its performance. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, next, let's talk about cost. So the upfront cost for the unit is $300, and uh, that's actually on the low end of what tankless reverse osmosis systems cost. Now, I think this is a great model if you're on a budget and if you still want a tankless system. But if $300 is too expensive, the older style of RO system with a storage tank can be had for cheaper. For example, here's one from Costco that's currently selling for $179. Next, we have to look at the cost of filter replacement over time. 
Now this Depro unit has three filters. The first stage is a PPC filter that removes large pieces of dirt and sediment. Then comes the actual reverse osmosis filter. And lastly, there's a CTO, a chlorine taste and odor filter. As of the filming of this video, the PPC filter costs $26 and is rated for a three to 12 month service life. The reverse osmosis, the RO filter comes next and it costs $60. And this is rated for one to two years. And lastly, that CTO filter costs $30 and it's rated for 12 to 18 months. Like most other tankless systems, there are warning lights on the front of the unit that tell you when it's time to change the filter uh, as far as I can tell, you need to visually check. Uh, the manual didn't say anywhere that the unit like beeps at you or anything to let you know. Uh, I know some other models do, so I don't think this one does. Uh, and this actually might be an issue if it's like under a sink somewhere that you don't look at often. But um, when you do open and look, it, it should be pretty obvious. Okay, let's summarize this by looking at a five-year cost of ownership. Now, since I don't know how long each of these filters is going to last, and it's going to vary depending on the quality of the water coming into your home, I'm gonna take the middle value. So for example, when a VRO filter says it lasts one to two years, uh, for the purpose of this calculation, I'm just gonna assume that it lasts a year and a half. That's in the middle of uh, you know, one to two years. So this gives us a five-year cost of $828 plus tax. So this includes the $300 upfront cost to buy the unit, and then $528 in filter costs over five years, which averages just over $100 per year for filters. Of course, in some years it would be more like every other year, maybe you have to buy the RO filter, in some years it'll be less, but averages out at a little over 100. Now, compared to WaterDrop and some other RO systems, um, this is actually a bit cheaper, so I'm impressed and cool, I like it. And for the last part of the review, let's look at quality. Uh, first, uh, the build quality of the unit. This is uh, maybe the weak point for this version at least. Um, you'll see in a moment during the installation that the first time I <laughs> removed the side panel here, uh, one of the little tabs actually broke off. Uh, maybe I'll cut in a clip here, but if not, it's in the installation part. That's no good. I, I did it exactly how they told me to do it too. So I will say overall, uh, it feels kind of cheap, especially compared to the water drop unit that I've been using. Um, the front panel too, like it's it's got little touch buttons and stuff. It's it just it just feels cheap, okay. Um, but does that actually matter? Because the quality of the water is is up to par, and typically uh, this thing's going to live out of sight, like under the kitchen sink or something. So sturdiness and build quality might not be as important as you would initially think. I, I don't know, but definitely definitely it's on the lower end. Now, if we look at the rest of the Depuro filter lineup we can see that it is the lowest end unit, so, so maybe the other units are, are built better. They have a similar unit that's, uh, I think it's exactly the same, except for that it has a stronger pump, and that one sells for $350. Uh, the filtration performance on that should be identical. Uh, the difference would be how fast the water comes out of the faucet due to a stronger pump. They also have two higher end models that you can see here, which look almost identical to water drop filters, but hey, if they're doing a good job, you might as well copy them, I don't know. If you're wondering about pumps and the water flow rate out of the faucet, let me break this down. So the measurement that they use is gallons per day. So if you left the filter on for a full 24 hours, how many gallons of water would the filter produce? This Depuro unit is rated at 400 gallons per day. And if you're curious about how this compares to some of the 600 gallon per day units on the market, here is a video and you can see the amount of time it takes to fill a 12 ounce glass of water. Next, I wanna to touch on the noise or the sound emitted from this unit. So even when it's placed under the sink, you will hear the pump motor run when you flip the faucet on. Now, when the water's not running, it's dead quiet, nothing's happening, but when you flip the faucet on, you will hear something. So I didn't measure how many decibels it made or anything like that, uh, but personally, uh, the sound is noticeable, but it doesn't really bother me. And uh, let me just cut in a clip of what it sounds like so that you can get an understanding. All right, let's touch on efficiency. So older styles of RO filters, the ones with the tanks, right? They would waste three to six gallons of water per unit of clean water produced, which is, that's pretty bad. Uh, these tankless systems are generally really good. The water drop unit I've been using wastes half a gallon of water per gallon of clean water produced. That's the best I've seen, that's pretty good. Um, and well, I guess I haven't tested whether that's true or not, but that's what they advertise. Now, here's the thing about this unit is, and I looked everywhere, they don't say. 
Now, my first thought or your first thought might be, well, they're probably hiding inefficiency. But the thing is, is when you have this thing installed, you can hear a little bit when the drain water is running. And so I've been using these filters for a while and I can kind of hear how much water is going out. And I don't think it's a lot. I don't think they're hiding anything. I don't think it's that inefficient. I just, I, I just, I think they forgot to like include that figure. Maybe I, I, don't, I don't, I don't really know. But if I find out, maybe I'll pin a comment below or, or something like that. So now let me get a little bit nitpicky. So compared to the screw in style of filter on the water drop units and the higher end Depiro units, uh, changing the filters on this model will be more difficult. Uh, since you actually have to take the side panel off to access the filters. Uh, that being said, I don't think it's a huge deal because it's still pretty easy and it's nothing like the difficulty in changing those old school filters for the, the, the RO systems with the tank. So nitpicky comment. And then lastly, uh, something that you should just be aware of that's not a big deal, but when you do turn the faucet on to like half speed, uh, the water tends to pulse as it exits the unit. And this is because the pumps used are not variable speed. They're either pumping at full speed or they're off. So if you set the flow rate on the, you know, on the faucet to halfway, uh, it kind of pulses when the water comes out. Could be annoying, but you know, uh, it's, it's not a deal breaker uh, in any sense. Okay, so that wraps up my review. Let's move on to the install. I've brought everything downstairs with me and I'm gonna go step by step through the entire process. If you're on the fence about doing the install yourself or hiring a plumber, uh, this should give you the information you need uh, to decide whether to do it or not. And then also if you're doing the install yourself, I'm gonna show every step of the way. So uh, if anything gets confusing, just uh, skip ahead to that part in the video or skip back, uh, it should help you out. Installation involves a few steps. Uh, first, input water needs to be split off from the main faucet uh, that comes up above the sink and, and routed into the unit. Uh, then a drain line uh, needs to be run to remove contaminated water from the unit. And lastly, an output water line needs to be run up and uh, a faucet needs to be installed above the sink and then it needs to be connected in. There are three ports on the top of the unit for the input, output, and, and, and drain water. Uh, so let me show you what those are. Uh, there's three ports here and uh, they come pre-installed with these blockers here to prevent debris from getting in during shipping. Uh, I thought that was a nice touch. Um, to remove them, you just hold down on the outside ring here and pull up. Um, if you don't hold that ring down and try to pull, they're not gonna come out. That's how the coupling works. So anyways, I'm gonna remove all three of them here. Then we can see on the right side here, uh, this is the input water port. It's a three quarter inch, it brings water into the system. Uh, in the middle, we have the waste water port uh, that takes it down the drain. Uh, it's a quarter inch. And then the filtered water output is for some reason, three quarter of an inch. Normally. The input's bigger and these two are three quarters of an inch. For some reason, they have this L-shaped uh, quick coupling here that converts three quarter inch to one quarter inch. I'm not sure why they did that, but it uh, won't affect the performance in any way. And then lastly, on the side here, this is uh, where you plug power into the unit. So that pretty much covers that. So there's one final thing we need to do to prep the unit before hooking everything up. Um, just in the same way that there's these little plastic blockers here uh, to prevent debris getting into the system. Uh, the manual says there's little gaskets on the inside between the filters themselves and the housing. So we just need to remove those so we don't forget to do it later. Um, the way to do this first is to grasp the outside here and just pull directly out. And it kind of snaps up and then lift up. Okay, and then next for each of the three filters, we push up on this tab, the filter pops out, and then there are these little, kind of tricky to get at, little gaskets here that need to be removed. So that was kind of interesting. Some of them fell out and other ones you had to really grab and pull on. Interesting. And then make sure that they're in the same order as before. So CTO, RO, and PPC left to right. So I'm gonna put the cover back on. Uh, something that I noticed as I was removing the cover is uh, one of these little pieces here um, snapped off. And I, I did it exactly how they said which uh, doesn't bode well for longevity. But in any ways, in any case, to do this, you really need to grab the edges, pull out and lift up. 
That'll minimize your chance for damaging anything. Okay, so let's start the install process by connecting the input water. And the first thing we have to do is connect uh, a feed water adapter. So uh, basically we're taking the input water, so your municipal water or your well water or whatever, and we're gonna split it off. So instead of just going straight up uh, to the faucet above the sink, we're gonna use a T-junction or a feed water adapter is what they call it, to split the water off and send some of it to the filter. So in the accessory box here, we have, uh, it's a T-junction here. So you can see um, the way it's set up now is the water just goes straight up to the faucet. We're talking about cold water, uh, if, if I didn't say that. Anyways, um, this T-junction just takes it and, and splits the water off. So the water coming out of here will go to the filter and then the rest will continue to go up to the sink uh, like normal. Now, the nice thing is Dupuro also includes, um, so that's a 3 8 of an inch. They also have quarter inch and half inch adapters, uh, same T-junction. I don't know why these are a different style, but it just screws in here and does the same thing. So the good news about them including all of these adapters is you're probably gonna find one that, that matches what's under your sink. I, I think that covers it. <laughs> um, one thing to be aware of though, some older homes like my parents' home uh, have just copper piping under the sink and there's no threads to screw something like this on. And in that case, uh, to install for them, I actually had to get a copper pipe cutter and I used a shark bite type connector to get that G junction in there. Um, you also could have soldered, I also could have soldered in a, a splitter there, but that's quite a bit more involved. So before you go out and buy one of these filters and decide you're gonna do it yourself, definitely look under your sink and, and just see what you got under there because it may or may not make this process a lot more complicated. Okay, so let's jump under here. And the first thing we're gonna do is, is shut off the cold water. If you're unsure which connection is cold and which is hot, uh, first look at the shutoff valves themselves. Usually they're labeled. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, you can test by shutting one off, running water into the sink, and then feeling the temperature of the output water with your hand. Here you can see that I'm loosening the connection that brings cold water to the faucet above the sink, just using an adjustable wrench in my hand. Um, also, if you didn't turn off the water, it is gonna spray everywhere. So make sure you did that. Next, I'm gonna take the three quarter inch tubing that came with the water filter. It's the, the wider or larger tube. And then I'm gonna connect it to the feed water adapter. To do this, unscrew the metal cap from the adapter. Then push the tubing onto the nipple and tighten the cap down and that will hold it in place. Before attaching the splitter, I'm wrapping the threads with Teflon tape to prevent small leaks. You don't need to purchase this. It comes in the box with the filter. Next, screw the feed water adapter into place and tighten down with a wrench. The white tube that we just attached uh, will exit the splitter at a 90 degree angle and bring tap water to the filter. After applying Teflon tape to the threads on the top of the adapter, you can see that I reattached the line that takes tap water to the main faucet above the sink. With the feed water adapter connected to the house, I move on to what is arguably the most tricky step in the install, connecting a drain line. This contraption is a drain saddle. It attaches to the existing drain pipe under your sink. A quarter inch hole must be drilled in a vertical section of the pipe. It is absolutely critical that the drain saddle be connected before the P-trap so that sewer gas does not escape into your home. When drilling, you also need to be very careful not to penetrate the opposite side of the drain pipe. Use a quarter inch drill bit, and go slow. Now the saddle can be connected. Spin the nuts down loosely. Then grab the white quarter inch drain tube that came in the box. The blue locking clip needs to be removed before the tube can be inserted. If you're wondering why my tubing is red and not white, well, that's because I'm using footage from a prior install. But would you have even noticed if I hadn't said anything? Yeah, I didn't think so. Next, insert the drain tube into the port on the drain saddle, line up the tube with the pre-drilled hole, and push in until you're certain that the tubing is inside the pipe. Now, the manual suggests inserting 6 tenths of an inch into the pipe, and you don't have to be exact, but there is a sweet spot. Push the tube in too far, and it'll press against the far side of the drain pipe, blocking the flow of water. Don't insert it far enough, and you might experience a leak. Once the tube is properly situated, reinsert the locking clip, 
and tighten down the drain saddle. Next, we're going to install the RO faucet. You will need a 1 and 3 8 inch hole in your sink. Now, this is a standard size, and it's likely that your sink already has at least one of them. Uh, if needed, you can drill a hole, but the difficulty of this is going to depend entirely on the material your sink is made out of. Uh, if your sink is made from a hard metal, you'll probably need like a special diamond tipped drill bit. And if your sink is porcelain like mine is, you need to be very careful because this material is delicate and prone to cracking. If you are going to go this route, uh, purchase the correct drill bit and follow the instructions exactly or just hire a professional. Since my sink already has an available hole, this part is easy. Here you can see me getting the mounting hardware out of the plastic bag that it came in. Next, I'm going to slide the base of the faucet into place and drop the entire thing into the hole. Then we're going to move under the sink to make the final connections and tighten it into place. So I'll start by tightening down the black washer to hold the faucet body into place. It is important to get it really tight so that the faucet doesn't spin around above the sink. And since there's a rubber ring up top, you don't have to worry about your sink getting scratched up or anything like that. Once the faucet is in place, it's time to attach the quick connect fitting to the bottom of the faucet stem. You can see how I secure it here with a blue locking clip. Lastly, insert the white filtered water tube, which we're going to put into the unit in a minute here, and secure that with a locking clip. The faucet is now installed. Grab the DePiro filter. It's time to connect all three tubes to the device. You can see that I have four locking clips and the white L-type quick coupling. I'm starting with the intake water. The white tube is coming from the previously installed feed water splitter. As before, push the tube all the way down until it stops and then install a blue locking clip to secure it into place. Next, I'm connecting the output water tube, the one we just connected to the faucet. I'm first connecting it to the quick coupling and then inserting it into the unit using two locking clips to secure it into place. And lastly, I'm doing the same thing for the drain water tube. Also, as a side note, you can cut the tubing shorter at any point if you'd like to create a cleaner install. Just use a sharp knife and make a clean cut. If you move to a new home and need longer tubing again, tubes are replaceable with 1 quarter or 3 eighths inch outer diameter tube that you can buy at any hardware store. The final connection is the power cable which goes into the front of the device. Then it's time to move the unit into place under the sink. I have a garbage disposal plugged into a switched outlet which is on the bottom, and I'm plugging my dishwasher and the DePuro filter into the top outlet, which is always on. That's it, the install is complete. However, we do need to let the unit run for 30 minutes or so to let the filters clear. When you do this, it's normal for the filter to make some weird noises at first as water enters the system, and then also the water might look slightly muddy as the carbon filter receives water for the first time. Okay, so I hope that helps you better understand uh, everything about this filter and the installation process. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section below. I will do my best to get to them. Uh, if you found this useful, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Uh, it really helps me to grow. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. This review was produced using a review unit provided by DePiro. I don't do paid reviews. The company paid no compensation for this coverage and also did not get an early look or any copy approval rights, which means that they're seeing this video for the first time right alongside you.